Hi everyone, this video is a continuation of how to make a 3D book in GameMaker. You don't need to watch the first part as long as you already understand the concepts used in primitives, and if you're interested in the code that was originally written. The first thing I'll be explaining is basically how rendering works in general with modern graphics. Hopefully this will give you an intuitive understanding of what's actually happening in GameMaker when you render something. A vertex buffer is a list of vertices that each have a position, a color, and a texture coordinate. Vertex shaders let you modify each individual vertex's data at the same time, and they're really fast because the GPU is specifically designed to run operations in parallel. Then, there are fragment shaders, and a fragment shader by default takes every set of free vertices data from a vertex shader and renders a triangle between them as pixels. And every pixel of every triangle that went through the vertex shader and into the fragment shader is rendered in parallel by the GPU. Then there's something called a varying variable. And what it does is, once you've created one in the vertex shader, the values from it, from three vertices, as it's passed through into the fragment shader, the values are blended over the area of the triangle that's being created based on their position in the triangle. So every pixel has a different value that's blended based on its position. And so you can modify with the vertex shader how every single vertex behaves. And then in the fragment shader, you can modify how every single pixel behaves. And then you can also pass something called uniforms into the shader, which lets you modify the vertex shader and the fragment shader based on actual information from your code. And the last thing is the depth buffer. The depth buffer is just another copy of the screen, but it contains the depth information of everything being rendered. In GameMaker, you can't access it, but basically every time you render something, every pixel that's gone through the fragment shader. When it's being passed from the fragment shader and the data is being sent to the actual screen, it checks if the pixel that's being rendered is above what's already on the depth buffer, and if it's not, it's not rendered. And at the same time, if it is above what's already on the depth buffer, then its depth will also be rendered as a color onto the depth buffer. And in Game Maker, if the overall game is 2D, then the depth buffer will be ignored by default, so you have to turn it on. And if it's not turned on, then GameMaker just uses their built-in depth system to sort rather than using the depth buffer. Render order is just calculated using depth values in objects. So here, for example, we have an image of a banana. So the process that the GPU is going through to render this image is, is rendering two triangles that each have their own set of uh, vertex data. So here, I'm passing the vertex coordinates through to the fragment shader as a color instead of a coordinate. And those texture coordinates are represented as X to red and Y to green. And so you can see in the top left of this square is black because the X is zero and the Y is zero. So the red and green values are both zero. And the top right, the red channel is 1, and the green channel is 0, so it's just pure red. On the bottom left, the green channel is 1, and the red channel is 0, which is just green. And in the bottom right, which is an X and a Y of 1, the red and green channels are both 1, so the color is yellow. And you can see how the varying variables from each of the vertices is being blended in both triangles to get the correct vertex coordinates. Now, we'll move over to coding, where I'll explain how all of this actually applies to our 3D book. Firstly, we'll create a new variable called surf, which we'll set to undefined. This will store the surface data of our page. Then, we'll create a new vertex format, with vertex format begin and vertex format end. And we'll add a position and a texture coordinate to it. And then we'll create a new vertex buffer, which is done with vertex create buffer. And now to actually provide information to this vertex buffer, you have to use vertex begin with the vertex buffer in the vertex format and also vertex end with the vertex buffer in it. Then inside the vertex buffer, we're going to loop from zero to the segment number. And the way you provide information to a vertex buffer 
is you just pass in the information for each vertex. So in this case, that would be the position and the texture coordinate. So in our loop, we're going to set the vertex position to I and zero because vertex position is 2D and there's a separate function for a 3D position. And then for the texture coordinate, we'll set the X to I divided by segment number minus one and a Y of zero. And what this will do is as I goes from zero to segment number, the texture coordinate will go from zero to one. Then we'll copy and paste those two lines and set the Y positions on both functions to one. And the reason is because we're going to use a Y of zero for the top of the page and a Y of one for the bottom of the page. So we're doing a similar thing to what we did in the first part of the tutorial, but this time we're making it in a way that can be passed into a shader. Then we'll add two functions for getting uniforms from our shader and we'll get page data and page data one. Then in the draw GUI event, we're going to add a check for if our surface is undefined or doesn't exist and we'll create it. So here I accidentally put 100 by 100, but it should be page width and page height. Then we'll set our surface target to surf and then cover the surface in white and then reset the target. Then inside that, we'll set our draw color to black and just draw an arrow that goes across the surface. Then at the bottom of our draw GUI event, where we were drawing our uniform before, we'll set our shader and we'll set our shader uniform to the segment length, page height, and our X and Y position. And we'll set our second uniform to be direction divided by 180 times pi and bend angle divided by 180 times pi and then segment number. And the reason we're dividing by 180 and multiplying times pi is converting degrees to radians because the shader language the game maker uses uses radians by default for functions. Then we'll submit our vertex buffer with the setting of PR triangle strip and the texture of the surface that we're using. Then we'll create our shader and we'll call it shader book. Firstly, we'll comment out in color because we aren't using it in our vertex format. We'll add our two uniforms, which are page data and page data one. Then we'll add our X variable, which is the same as what was in the draw GUI event. We've just passed it into the shader using the uniform. And then we'll add our Y position, which was passed into page data at the W index. And we'll add imposition.y multiplied by our page data.y. So what that is, is it's the value that says whether it's the top or the bottom of the page multiplied by the page height. Then we'll set our start y position to our y value and our page direction to page data one dot x. Then we'll loop from zero to imposition dot x, which is actually the individual segment number of the current vertex. And we'll add page data one dot y to our direction, page data one dot y being our bend angle. Then to our x value, we'll add the cosine of direction multiplied by page data dot x. And then to y, we add the minus sign of direction multiplied by page data dot x. This is mathematically the same as what GML is doing with the length dir functions. Then we'll set our object space position to x, y, y minus start y, and one. So what we're doing is recalculating every vertex's position as it was in the primitive. But this time we're calculating them individually using the vertex shader. Now we're setting our color to a vec4 of one. This just sets all our color values to one. And we'll also pass in our texture coordinate dot x and y to our red and green color channels. And we'll also leave the fragment shader exactly as it is because it's just multiplying the texture values by the color. And now if we run this, you'll see the animation is working exactly the same as it was before, but now we can modify the texture on the surface of a page. For instance, we can use the Z position we created to create a fake depth effect by just fading the values based on how far away they are from where they should be. That's everything for this tutorial. There's still a lot that can be explained after this on how to actually make all of this into a book, but I'm not sure if I'll make another tutorial as it was already so much effort to make this. Please follow me on Twitter and subscribe to this YouTube channel at Rowan Future as I have more content coming soon. Thanks for watching.